So this is the- No, mine, I'm not giving this up. <laughs> We've been waiting for this for like 14 years. Find out about it next, and now let's review. Like I said, I'm not letting go of it during the entire review. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna have to steal it from you at a couple points. But what we're talking here today is the Vortex plug from Electron. This is a Tesla supercharger to CCS1 adapter. So this is going to allow you to take your Ford F-150 Lightning and charge it at a Tesla supercharger. Check this out. Oh, it's fast charging. Oh my oh, God, oh, we're doing it, we're doing it, oh, woohoo, woohoo! Yes, check it out. No way, baby, let's go! Yeah. So as you can see, it, it worked. We did a, a nice long charge with it. The thing didn't get warm or anything like that. Also, we took our Rivian R1T and we did the same exact thing. It worked for that one too. Check this out. We're at 63% state of charge. So you're going back into your app. Mm -hmm. Charge you're here, it. 1B, start charging. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Charging. It says charging. Yep. You're right. Yeah. And if you're asking, okay, but does it handle my non-Tesla EV? Well, you can go check out the list. Um, basically, almost every manufacturer now has signed on to NACS, which is the North American charging standard, which is the Tesla standard. The only question is whether Tesla has turned them on to their network yet. And for that, you're either going to have to go test it out yourself or um, ask around on forums. Now, this adapter should work as soon as your car is enabled by Tesla, because as long as your car has, and I'm gonna steal it just for a minute, as long as it has the CCS1 plug, you should be all set. This means that for like the Nissan Leaf, which has the Chatamo port, um, I'm not sure if the new ones still have the Chatamo port or if they went CCS, that means that you won't be able to charge, say, my <laughs> 2013 Nissan Leaf using this adapter because, well, it's just a different plug entirely. What you're gonna use to use this is you're gonna use the Tesla app. So you're gonna have to get the Tesla app, even though you don't own a Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, and that should allow you, you'll choose which stall you're at once you get to a Tesla supercharger. Now keep in mind, this won't work at every single supercharger. Yeah, how do you find out whether the supercharger will work for your car? So what you're gonna do is, even though you have a Ford or a Rivian, you're gonna download the Tesla app on your phone, create a Tesla account, even though you don't have a Tesla vehicle or any Tesla product, then you're gonna put in a credit card. That credit card is basically going to be attached to your account, and when you do charging, it's gonna charge that um, to say that you know you are charging uh, at a supercharger and it'll charge you money. But then how do you find out if a supercharger will work for you? So in the app, you're gonna go to the section which says you know to charge your EV. Um, that's gonna pull up a map. The map is gonna zoom in on wherever you are because it's assuming that you're at a supercharger and you wanna start charging as quickly as possible. If you're at home and you're just kind of planning a trip, you can uh, zoom around that map and find the superchargers that are available to you. So not all superchargers are open right now. It's also cool because it'll tell you which ones are available at that moment. So if you're on a drive, you can see that, oh, coming up in a few miles, there's plenty of spaces available or there aren't. Exactly. Now, one question that came up with a bunch of our viewers was, what's gonna keep someone from stealing this when I'm at a supercharger and then I go to the bathroom or something? So that would be the same thing that would normally keep uh, your car when it is fast charging or even slow charging um, from somebody being able to unplug it. And that is essentially uh, this hook right here. Um, this is your normal J1772 kind of hook. It's also the same as the CCS1. That kind of goes in and it clips on, and then your car has a little thing that can go zoop and prevent somebody from opening that. Okay, but it wouldn't keep some nefarious person from unplugging the Tesla charger and stopping your car from charging. As far as I'm aware, I might be wrong about this. There might be some internals in this that would prevent that from happening. Um, but because we wanted to get this video out as soon as possible, um, we just went and tested it, which meant that when we were at our car, the car was obviously unlocked. And so we were able to unplug this because we own the car. The good news is your app would tell you, your Tesla app would say, oh, you're not charging right now. And right. you could head back to the car and find out why. And so would your car app, whatever app that may be. Now I wanna mention when you go to a supercharger, they're gonna charge you either 50 cents or 40, 54 cents a kilowatt hour. That's what they've been charging us. You can sign up with Tesla for $12.99 a month to get a lower per kilowatt hour charge rate. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna do it a lot, I would recommend looking into that. Um, otherwise it is a little pricey, at least in our area. And let's just talk about how this works. So what you're gonna do is arrive at the supercharger. You're gonna pick a stall that you are going to be able to charge your car at. Now with the Ford and the Rivian, this means that we end up um, preventing two Teslas from charging there. The charge port is on the front left of both the Rivian and the Ford, which means that we have to pull straight in. And it's sort of like if a normal Tesla had a plug 
on the right hand rear side of the car because you always back in your Tesla to charge. And so we end up usually blocking two spots. Oh, right. Because even though we're only taking up one spot, we're actually using, using the charger. Using the charger. On the wrong spot. That so, what you there. should do is pull in as far right as you can because sometimes there's a spot that's actually outside of the chargers. That will keep it so you're not blocking any other Teslas. Because in essence, if you came to an eight stall supercharger and let's say there was four Ford Lightnings, those four would take up all eight slots. Yes, which is not, uh, not cool. Not too cool. But anyway, uh, you could also try the pull ins. Uh, we, uh, all superchargers are a little different. So, you know, see how What's few. A pull in, uh, a pull in uh, spot. You pull straight in. Oh, yeah. A lot of times you'll to. see seven that are this way and then one that's further out. Yes. So you could pull into that one. So you know, try to not block as many as you can. The next thing you're gonna do is take the charging handle from the supercharger. You're then gonna have to depress this little trigger down here. So there's this one, and then there's this one. We're only worrying about the under one for now. You depress that, and then you can slide the Tesla supercharger handle in. Oh, you have to depress it to slide it in? That's what I found. Okay. I think that there is a little yep, bit of a, a yeah. There. It's, the lock will get in the way. I think maybe if you pushed hard enough, I'd depress it. Slide that on, click it on, then you can take the whole thing, uh, plug it into your car. Then you're gonna have about a minute to start charging. Um, we've messed this up before, mainly because we're filming. What you do then is pull out the Tesla app, go to the charging section, find the supercharger that you are at, then look at the supercharger that the cord is attached to. It'll have either like 1A, 1B, 2C, 3D, whatever. Find that one, say start charging, and everything should just start working. Yeah. As long as you have the credit card on file. So what's flowing through here? Is it AC or DC? It's gonna be DC. So it's using the DC ports uh, of this. This adapter is rated at 500 amps, 1000 volts. So it could charge then up to 250 kilowatts, probably even 350 kilowatts if your car could take it. Yes, so I, mean, I think that the really nice part about this is going forward, um, there are uh, version four superchargers now, which should have 350 uh, kilowatts of charging speed. I'm not sure how many non-Tesla EVs can accept uh, the full 350, but this should allow it. Yeah, so we're probably talking like Porsche Taycans and things like that. Yes, and so basically this would be able to put uh, 800 volts through it. Most superchargers have been 400 volts up until this point. Uh, the newer ones are 800 volts. This is a game changer for the two non-Tesla vehicles we have. We have the Rivian R1T and the Ford F-150 Lightning. And up until now, I have felt like they could only stay in our local area and not go for long road trips. We have not traveled outside of about 150 miles from home just because we need to get back. And I think you've probably heard us talk about this before. The Electrify America network, which is the one that normally has this on it, is not so good. The Tesla supercharger network is reliable. It's plentiful. Um, there's always enough stalls for the most part. And uh, I think that it's the far, far better charging network. Um, this is gonna open the door for a lot of people to do a lot more travel in their EVs. Now I know what you're saying right now, which is, well, Ford told me I'm gonna get one of these. I they, just wanna say- They told us that too. <laughs> Uh, we haven't even been able to order it yet, I think because they're probably sold out. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that even once you're able to order, it may take months. So for $199, I feel like this is really important to have in your tool chest. Um, and then eventually if Ford or Rivian or whoever sends you one for free, you can either sell this or give it to a friend or, you know, keep using it. Yeah, I think that, um, you know, right now it's spring 2024. A lot of people are going to be planning on doing some road trips. Maybe a lot of people weren't planning on doing road trips. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking of doing road trips yeah. in my non-Tesla EV because suddenly I can. It's really, really exciting. And for 200 bucks, it's not, that's not a bad price. Also, I just want to say the build quality is really good. Like Let's it talk feels about good that. in your hand. It's yeah. well built for sure. Um, and the fact that it's UL listed mm -hmm. means that you don't have to worry about it being made like built like crap or something. Yeah, so high quality plastics all on the outside. Um, I'm sure that it could get scuffed up if you kind of drop it or whatever like that, but I don't think that it's going to break. Then also both charging triggers are metal. So this one is metal and this is the one that usually breaks, by the way. <laughs> Um, we've seen uh, a lot of J1772 like when you drop it or level two charger handles that if you drop them, um, if this is made out of plastic, it can snap off and then you lose that locking feature. You also make it a little dangerous because you can pull the car out without telling it to stop charging. So there could be some arcing. So having it be metal is so nice. The same thing uh, is true with, with this one as well. Um, it just is nicely built, well secure. And uh, yeah, I think you're gonna get a lot of use out of it.
If you decide to pull the trigger, use our link down below to get the lowest price. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Knowledge Review.